So the guy who shot and killed Miss Robbie's grandson, Travel Hill, admitted that he did kill him, but it was her son who paid him to kill the grandson. On March the 14th, 2016, outside a house of the 3900 block of Natural Bridge Road, in exchange for $5,000. Andre Montgomery, who was 21 years old, was shot and killed in the 3900 block of Natural Bridge Road just after 8 p.m. on March the 14th, 2016. His uncle, Tim Norman, was one of four people indicted in the conspiracy. Travel Hill, the accused trigger man, was indicted in November 2020 on one count of murder for hire and one count of conspiracy to commit murder for hire. Vial Yagman, Norman's insurance agent, was also indicted in August of 2020 on one count of conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud. He pleaded guilty in July of 2022. So prosecutors were able to get information from Mutual of Omaha because they called to find out information about a policy. So according to prosecutors, Norman conspired with Yagnon to fraudulently obtain the life insurance policy on Montgomery. So in October of 2015, the pair submitted four separate life insurance applications, each of them containing false information regarding Andre's income, net worth, medical history, employment, and family background to the insurance company, Mutual of Omaha. So representatives from three of the insurance companies stated in court that they canceled the application process due to incomplete paperwork or inability to obtain the necessary information to issue a policy. And they claimed in court, even if they had gotten information and the application was completed in full, they still would not have issued a policy because Norman was not part of Andre Montgomery's immediate family. In the policy that was ultimately issued through Foresters, Norman obtained a $220,000 policy with a 200000 accidental death rider that would pay out if Montgomery died of anything besides natural causes and a $50,000 10-year term rider that would pay out if Montgomery died within a decade of the policy being approved. All four of the insurance representatives testified that Tim Norman was listed as the sole beneficiary on each of the applications that Yagnum filed. So prosecutors said that Tim Norman attempted to conceal the plan from Andre about this life insurance policy that he took out on him. And the policy said that anything above $250,000, person who is being insured would have to have a medical examination to, to determine if they are a health risk. So according to the policy, if you take out above 250000 or that 250000 mark, the person have to come in for a medical examination. So what Tim Norman did, he went $1 below the $250,000. So he took out a policy for $249,999 instead of the full $250,000. In that way, Andre wouldn't have to come in for any medical examination. $1 shy of the required amount for a medical examination of Andre by the insurance company. In the months leading up to the application being filed, prosecutors said that Norman was very eager about filing the application 
and he texted Yagnon and he said Andre is not going to be around very long. FBI agent Faber also testified that it could not be determined if somebody had forged Andre's signature on the insurance application because they did not have enough writing samples of Andre. So when Miss Robbie's home was burglarized, more than $200,000 in cash and other valuables were stolen. And Tim Norman pointed the finger at Andre, who left the area shortly after the crime. Text messages presented in court revealed that Andre was very fearful of his uncle. The text messages was between Andre and his grandmother, and the text messages revealed that Andre was in fear of his own safety. He denied any involvement in the robbery and suggested his uncle might be responsible. Faber, who is an FBI agent, said the FBI does not know who ultimately was involved in the burglary, but he said ultimately Andre was cleared by the county authorities. So attorney Leonard pointed out that Andre failed to contact his grandmother or anyone else in his family in the seven to ten months that he left town. Andre continued to be active on social media, however. He was seen posting up with guns, etc., according to the defense attorney. So Andre had left St. Louis after the burglary because there was a burglary at Miss Robbie's house. Andre left and everyone assumed that he was the one who committed the crime. That's why he left. But Faber said that Andre returned to St. Louis in March 2016. Just before his death, he came back to St. Louis to take a polygraph test to clear his name in connection with the June 15th burglary at the home of the grandmother's house, Robbie Montgomery. Now, police said over $200,000 in cash and other valuables were stolen from the residents. So Hill said on the day of the shooting, he met with Tim Norman south of downtown St. Louis. So on that day, Tim Norman, who is 43, and Tarika Ellis, the exotic dancer he was going out with at the time, bought and activated prepaid cell phones from Walgreens in the Central West East neighborhood. So Tarika Ellis then told Tim Norman to initiate all further phone calls using these prepaid phones that was just bought. They're known as burner phones because they bought them just to use and throw them out. So on March the 16, 2016, Tim Norman told Hill to meet with someone that they both knew. And he's to meet the person at the intersection of Shoto Avenue and Dillon Court which is close to Hill's apartment at the housing complex. So when Hill got to the intersection of Dillon Court and Shoto Avenue, the person gives him a bag and told him to keep his mouth shut. The name of that person is Darrell Howard. In the year 2020, he went into an agreement with the government to be a witness against Tim Norman. He said that Tim Norman is the one who told him to go retrieve the $5,000 from the Plaza Hotel. And he did it because they had been friends since the year 2011. So the prosecutors said in court that Hill, the gunman, discussed the killing of Andre with his brother, who is serving time in jail. And they know this because they have the recorded conversations. So after Andre was murdered, Alice, the girlfriend of Tim Norman, deposited over $9,000 into several banks in Memphis where she lives.
and it was part of the payment that Tim Norman promised her. So the fourth person involved in this murder for hire is the insurance company agent. And his name is Royal Rebha Yagnon. He was charged with wire fraud, mail fraud, and several counts of identity theft. So prosecutors laid out the case and they said that Yagnon helped Norman submit five separate applications for the insurance policies on Andre Montgomery, all of which contain falsified information. The gunman, Treville Hill, was convicted of one count of conspiracy to commit murder and another count of murder for hire in the death of Andre Montgomery. So during this meeting that Tim Norman had with Hill near the housing complex where he lived. Tim Norman told him that Ellis, the female, would call him later that day with Andre's location. So Hill knew he was contracted to kill Andre, so then he obtained a .380 semi-automatic caliber weapon from someone who lived near the apartment building. So prosecutors said this particular gun was chosen because it was so small that it can be easily concealed under Hill's sweatshirt. The person who gave the gun to Hill, however, was not named in the court documents. So at this point, Ellis attempted to call Hill at least five times. And at around 7.07 p.m., Andre Montgomery texted his location to Ellis, who then relayed it to the gunman, Hill, and Tim Norman. And the location was 3964 Natural Bridge Road. So Ellis, a 33-year-old exotic dancer from Memphis at that time, was involved in a relationship with Tim Norman. So she passed on the message to Hill when he was at the location that she was going to lure Andre outside of the home for Hill to kill him. So at around 8 p.m., Hill arrived at the home and Andre Montgomery came out a short time later. This account was supported by eyewitnesses. So initially, Hill was not sure that a man who came outside of the house was Andre Montgomery. So in order to confirm his identity, Hill said he asked Andre, if he had any marijuana. So at that point, Andre walked towards a vehicle where someone was sitting inside the car, at which point he spoke to the person inside the car. So Alice gave Hill the go-ahead that, yes, this is the guy. So after Andre left the car, he was walking back to the house. This was around 8 p.m. At which point, Hill calls out to Andre. Andre turns around, walking towards him, and he shot him several times. So minutes after the murder, Alice, who was then going out with Tim Norman, she's the exotic dancer. She calls him on the phone. She let him know that the deed was done. She began to drive back to Memphis, where she lives. And Tim Norman had flown from St. Louis to L.A. earlier in the day, returned to California. He returned to California because that's where he was setting up the new restaurant, Sweetie Pies. So after Andre's death, Tim Norman, who was also charged with mail fraud and wire fraud, he tried to collect the insurance money of $450,000 of the insurance policy that he took out on Andre Montgomery. So the breakdown of the policy is a base policy of $250,000 as well as a $220,000 accidental rider that would pay out 
in the event that Andre died of something other than natural causes, like a shooting, and a $50,000 rider that would pay out if Andre died within 10 years of the policy issuance in 2014. So Hale pleaded guilty on both counts of murder to the plea agreement. The prosecutors did not call for the death penalty for Tim Norman as well as Ellis, his girlfriend at the time of the murder, are now serving time in the penitentiary. YouTubers, I'm over now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and to this video. Thank you for watching.